Hey everyone, it's Lisa and today I have such a an exciting video and it's not only exciting for me, I just feel really excited for you. <laughs> I have now lost 25 pounds since the end of May. It was the Tuesday after Memorial Day that I started this and I am at my, I don't know that I ever really set a goal, but I always knew that I always felt good at 127. That's, I can remember weighing 127 when I was 25 years old. I really feel just excitement that I achieved that goal. I feel just, I don't know, there's just something about doing something that you set out to do that is important to you, you in your soul, and doing it and it is just it builds confidence it builds your self-esteem it just really does something for you if i am able to i'm going this video is going to have kind of a risque thumbnail and i'm going to approve it with john and my parents but i wanted to get my point across because one of my biggest points is i'm going to start putting some pictures up up here or i think it up here <laughs> and whichever side has more space and I'm going to show you pictures of me you know outfits of the day maybe just pictures that I like that I took when I was at my heaviest and what you're going to see is I don't look that much different and then I'm going to put some pictures up here starting hopefully i've had time to put all those pictures up here i want to put this one picture up here and it was when brooke and i went to new york now we had a good time because anytime you're with your family or someone you love and especially your daughter it was the first time she ever flew the first time she'd ever been to new york and we did all the things that mother daughters do we went to times square we went shopping, we went and ate, you know, we stayed um, in Soho, you know, we did a lot of things. Brooke was very homesick. It was very, very overwhelming because New York City is very different than Wilmington, North Carolina. So the first day we went shopping at all the big places like Gucci and everything, and she took this picture of me. And that picture I do remember because you'll see I'm kind of holding my bag. I'm trying to hold my stomach. I'm trying to hold it where it covers my stomach. I was in so much pain that day, you guys. I mean, IBS was out of control. My stomach hurt so bad, but I didn't want to let it ruin our day. And I just persevered. I just carried on. I can remember standing in the line at Zara, which was crazy i mean i don't know how long we stood there that's why i have flip-flops on because i had gotten to the point in my life it was hard for me to wear heels and do you remember right around that time is when i started getting all the comfortable shoes it actually started before that but on that trip i ended up getting i think two pair of tennis shoes that will go into another video that day i felt so bad i mean physically felt so bad and i never want to feel like that again so that is like i've told you a big motivation to not somewhat lose weight but my stomach was swollen i was so bloated it felt like a basketball was in my stomach i could not suck it in at all it was tight as a drum i mean and i remember that night just feeling so bad like just you know just being sick really that was part of my motivation then i am very 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 motivated by fashion and feelings and i love different fashion looks and i knew that even if i could pull these looks off I would not feel the same and I really really wanted that feeling of wearing a pair of boots with a dress and I didn't want to do it not feeling 
a certain way. I feel like a certain vibe within my soul has to go with that. So that was very motivating. So I'm going to put some pictures up here of different things that motivated me. Then a lot of times I'm real big, I'm very visual, and I really, really, really believe in like I've never done a vision board, but you guys know I've like taken pictures and made them my screensaver. I have all kinds of my favorite looks on Pinterest. I have pictures that I keep that I wish I had organized because I'm bad about just doing a screenshot and not really, you know, keeping it in any kind of order. But like this picture here, I don't know when I just screenshotted it again so I wouldn't have to find it but I don't know when I took it but even pictures like this okay I know and I'll put it up here I know that this girl is young I know that the days of me looking exa exactly like this are gone but this is motivating to me I don't want to be stick 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 thin I want to be a sexy woman with curves and you know that's why I loved this picture she to me is very thin but voluptuous and that's what i like so we all have a vision of what we like so like someone said to me the other day and brooke has said this too and john has said this i'm losing my butt well that's not important to me i had a big butt and i hated it i hated that big butt and that's not in my soul what makes me feel good so it's very, very important to get in your head what feels good to you. What is, what would you like to look like? What is important to you? And so along with not feeling good and wanting to wear certain things, and I really want to do fashion videos, but you know what was always holding me back? is I felt bad about how I looked. I did not feel good mentally and physically. So I did not want to have to worry about every angle. And you guys just can't understand how it feels. Every time I get up from this spot, whether I'm through with my video or I'm going to get something, this is what I see. And I see the side and I see everything. Okay, even if I can edit that out, I see it. I see the big tummy that I cannot get rid of. It was because of menopause. I think menopause is, I think, what is responsible for the way my body was changing. The thickness, the side view, that is, I think menopause was a big part of that. I also think menopause was a big part of really irritating my IBS and I'm going to do some other videos on that too so if that interests you please hang with me I wish I could do I'm doing a video every day and I don't know if I'll ever run out of things to tell you a big tummy like that was menopause and the IBS because when you have IBS your intestines and your your large intestines and your small intestines they blow up and they blow up with fluid a lot of times so it is hard as a rock and then you have the menopause fat in there it just is not a good feeling so think of all the videos i watched all the pictures that i didn't post so like to you you might think oh you don't look that much different where did you hide it or you looked fine or i liked you when you were more voluptuous i liked you when you had a butt and I may think I liked you better when this or that, but it has to be your self-image. It has to be what you want. It can't be what your husband wants. It can't be what your best friend, your sister, your subscribers. It just can't be. To feel good in your skin, you have to be that person you want to be. And when you do it like I have, it is just amazing it is and I could just like jump out of my skin and that's when people say to me you can't keep this up well maybe I can't but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn back today you know maybe in a year or so I think well I just don't think I will I just don't think I will mainly because of the health aspects of it 
I never want to feel that way again, you guys. You just don't know how many vacations, parties, good times feeling like that ruined for me. And just the cloud I see over pictures and stuff. I never want to feel like that again. The, that really supersedes even the fashion or the health. So the main point I want to get across to you is you have to want it. It has to be a passion. It has to be not what society is telling you, not what your husband is telling you. It has to be a passion because I think what will really get you there, especially at my age, 50, I am postmenopausal. This is funny. I love keeping this just for just for laughs. I have this app it's the flow app Brooke organized my phone and now sometimes I can't find stuff here it is it's got like a feather on it okay and it okay I am 489 days late since my last period <laughs> so that is how far into post menopause or whatever it's so confusing you know peri menopause whatever, all that stuff but so that will give you some context so the point i was getting across is if you really don't want to um if you're not ready and it's not really a passion for you and you are really having to use your willpower and you really want to eat that but you're having to make yourself not do it then it might not be the right time because you know I just I think I've gone through that so much when you really feel passionate about what you're trying to achieve you will be so driven and I've told you times that I am scooping the chocolate chip cookies off and I thought I could cheat two cookies won't you know won't do I mean like I used to cheat on the weekends or whatever I, I was I had the wrong motivation. Everything had not come together yet for me. So I was having to always use willpower. And you know, I, it's, it's a life changing thing, meaning that I had to really change my life. I don't go out to eat anymore. I might go through McDonald's or um, what's the other, Five Guys Burgers, and I might get a bacon cheeseburger with no bun. But like Brooke says, I miss the old mommy. I, I want to go to Longhorn. All I can think about is eating all that bread, the fried shrimp, the fried Mexican rolls, the fried this, the chocolate cookie with the ice cream. That's what I think of. There's just nothing there for me. And I have to just get in my mind. The old me would have said, oh, I'm going to go do it. This time with my daughter is so worth it. I need to do this. But the new me says, she's 20 years old she's mature enough to understand this is deeper than weight and body size to you and she will have to either eat with you at home or go you know eat that with someone else and that is just that's an extreme thing for me you guys that is an extreme life change for me just being home as much as I am now is an extreme thing for me. Cooking every night is extreme for me, and that's what it takes. If you are wanting to lose your menopause weight, change your life, feel good about yourself, just um, change your health, it has to be something you want really, really bad. And so it might not be time. Another thing I want to get into, and I, I mentioned this, I think, in my first, one of my first videos that I did. I think it was what made me decide to, to go on this journey. And I said to you, it's going to have to be something extreme. And I said, you know, maybe you are a vegan. And, you know, I watched um, a video that I watched that was actually very inspiring to me was Erin Busby. When she did her videos about losing weight, and I'm sure so many people thought, you know, said to her, oh, you had nothing to lose. You didn't have Harley. You're naturally skinny. But that was bothering her. And it was, you saw her cry at the end when you see that it meant so much to her because fashion and clothes and her job and YouTube means so much to her that she was willing to go all in. And that to her is a vegan or I think she said plant-based diet. And she has been able to do it. 
So it may be something like that for you. Okay, with my issues, my IBS issues, I cannot do that. So that is why I stumbled into keto, or I call it uh, ketovore, because it's a little bit of keto, a little bit of carnivore. It just depends on what day it is. And I can specifically remember sitting at the counter with my mom across from me, and, you know, they're concer always concerned about what I'm doing, what I'm eating, and, you know, my health, just like a mom is. And I remember saying to her clear as day, I'm not doing keto or anything. You know, I'm not going to worry about fat bombs or anything like that. You know, just, I mean, just blowing, completely blowing off the whole keto thing. Because at that point, I was just really trying to get my stomach to quit hurting. And so I was just eating meat. I thought, I'm just going to eat meat for a week. And then I felt so good, I just ate meat for two weeks. And then it felt so good, I just kept eating meat for three weeks. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, can you, um, can you drink? Some people ask me about smoothies or if I blend up things. I tried. I tried to have smoothies. I can remember the day that Brooke and I, I looked up keto Starbucks drinks. And because another thing that was a big, big issue for me is I am very, very routine. I love doing the same thing for the same day. I love eating the same thing every day at the same time. I'm just, that is what makes me happy. That's my comfort zone. So every day I would go to Chick-fil-A and I would get those chicken tenders. That was a big thing to change. That was a big thing to change for me. And it sounds silly, but once you get a habit, like, my, like I say with habits, you best form good ones because it is so hard sometimes, especially for someone like me, to get out of those habits. So anyway, it just felt so good. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I had looked up uh, keto Starbucks drink because in my mind, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm going to tell you all the silly, stupid things that I thought and felt. In my mind, okay, I was thinking, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace those chicken tenders with a good Starbucks drink because everybody looks like they love going to Starbucks and they love drinking their drink, but I don't like coffee. That's the big kicker. I don't like coffee. So I got a, it had peach in it. I can't remember what it was. It was a, Brooke said it wasn't a pink drink because I was trying to remember it the other day. Um, what was it? Oh, I don't know what it was. It was a green tea because I had read that green tea was good on, um, I think I had started thinking I might be doing keto whether I knew it or not. And so it was green tea with some, it was all no sugar and it was some peach in it. And I don't even think, I think I just couldn't even hardly make it home. It, it, it hurt me for days. So whatever was in that drink scared me. So now I'm scared to eat even like blended fruit or anything. And if you were really, you might think I'm being ridiculous, but more and more these days, doctors are telling people if they have IBS or if they have food sensitivities to intermittent fast, it's more than losing weight. It's giving your system, oh my goodness, I just had the worst, guys, I just had the worst scary feeling that my camera had cut off because I don't like to have to say things twice because what I'm saying to you is from my heart and it's hard to do that. <laughs> over and over again anyway doctors are now saying to people like me and some of us that if you have these food sensitivities you have IBS whether it's constipation or the other intermittent fasting is going to be good because it gives your system a break it allows your system to you know do what it needs to do and give it a break so intermittent fasting is going to be good for your, your, your body, for your health, and you will lose some weight. Keto, the reason I chose it is, like I've already told, explained to you, and keto is very good with menopause because that weight around your middle, most of it is inside. It's inside your body. It's wrapped around your organs. I remember years ago, it was whenever Dr. Oz was on Oprah. And he had, you know, he would bring out um, different parts of the body. And he showed 
a stomach with a bunch of fat on the actual organ, the stomach, with a bunch of fat on it. And it was so gross. It was so gross. And he said, this is why a lot of people have heartburn and um, indigestion because when that fat grows on your stomach, it tilts it and everything you're eating starts coming back up. It just throws things out of whack. So I always remembered that about the fat inside your body. So when I would turn to the side in the mirror and it would, I never took a picture that way because that's just not my, that's not my deal. I don't take any bad pictures I have of myself. If I haven't deleted them, it's a miracle because I'm not into looking at things that make me sad. I'm very, very motivated by good things. So anyway, when I would get in the shower, we have a mirror right there in the bathroom. I would look and it would just be like, sometimes I just wouldn't look. I mean, I'm serious, you guys. I would not even recognize that person. I was going to do something about it. And it took until now. Now you're thinking, did it have something to do with you turning 50? Maybe, you know, because I can't lie. I loved my 40s. I loved my 40s. I, you guys have experienced growth in me. Best growth period of my life. And I am not sad about being 50 at all. I love it. I love being here. I love my family. I love what I've, I, I'm so thankful. It's, I'm so thankful I feel guilty and I'm trying to get rid of that. But I have a lot of life left and I'm going to just, it's not going to be scared. It is not going to be feeling bad if I can help it. It is not going to be feeling inferior. It is not going to be feeling guilty. It is not going to be feeling like I'm too old to do something. I am going to live every day of my life like it is the best day. And I'm just on that path and I want you to come with me. I'm going to end this video here. I was thinking and thinking and thinking this morning, what would be the best outfit to wear on my first day of weighing 127? at 50 years old and losing all of my menopause weight. And I went through, I pulled out this outfit that I found I could wear this, I could wear that. I have, I'm wearing something that is quintessentially me. This is something I love and I could have worn it at 152. I wore this dress when I was 152. I could have worn this blazer, but I like the way I feel in it now, today. This is how I wanted to feel. So I've got on a new blazer that I just got from Zara. If you can't tell, I love Zara. And I just got it either yesterday or day before. And I'm wearing the slip dress that I got from Victoria's Secret. It's one of my favorite ones. But I will link some of my other favorite slip dresses down below because there's one I almost got this morning or yesterday. And I was like, Lisa, you need to chill out. You got enough slip dresses. And I'm going to try on two pair of shoes to see how I feel. I haven't even tried them on yet, but I thought I would just do it with you guys. So I'll be right back. No belt because I kind of want to go for this casual look. You know, I could put on a belt and it would definitely change the look. But the look I'm going for today is kind of, um, I don't know, I can't really say model off duty but just the casual, casual look. And I know it really gets on a lot of people's nerves that I like oversized blazers. I like my blazers to hit about right there. So this is perfect. It's a medium, it's got shoulder pads. You know I love a tuxedo. I mean, it's satin on the inside. It could not be a better blazer. You need it. Okay, the shoes I'm going to start off with are my good old Zara heels. And they're the nude ones with the clear straps. So I felt like this is a vibe that I like. And I did order the Gianni Beanie Pink Lady that I showed you guys in yesterday's video. So we'll get to see how they feel and how they look. So this is one look. And I got the Schutz shoes out. And I thought, you know, this is another vibe. I think these shoes are so pretty. They're very comfortable. And for accessories, I have on these Sheila Fajal hoops. 
I think in my video, I, or yeah, my video yesterday, I said they were the Celine hoops. They're not. They're the Elisa hoops. They're just a little bit smaller than the favorite hoops, and I like how they're kind of squared off. I just think that gives a little bit of something to them. I don't know. And one of my favorite rings, the Castle Ring and the Blue Topaz. OPI, Lincoln Park After Dark. Two, I was going to save this until Friday because I do have some makeup to show you on Friday on tomorrow. And but I have been wearing these and oh my goodness, I this is probably my favorite Fenty product ever is this lipstick formula. This one I have on today is glazed and it is the pinky, I mean the peachy out of all of them. I have the nudie one. This one, they're the formula is very similar. See, I've all smushed it a little bit by going too hard. The formula is similar to the L'Oreal Shines. So if you don't want to pay this, the L'Oreal Shine, Shining Peach, probably favorite lipstick of all times. Even above the other one, which was the other one, I want to say Rose Among Thorns, Rose, Rose Amethyst, I think. Shining Peach is my favorite, but this is very similar. Yesterday I wore the pink one, I think it's called Sweet Something, and then I've got the nudie one, and then I've got another one that I'll try to wear tomorrow. I think any color you get in this, you would love. They are pigmented just enough. They are, they smell good, they feel good, they're shiny. I, I do have a little bit of Buxom Celeste, but that's because I'm doing a video and it just looks better if I have a little bit of gloss on, but you don't need to, especially if you're wearing a mask. This is my princess here. Hey, baby. Hello. Can, I'm talking to my mother. <laughs> can I call okay. you right back after I do a, make, finish this video? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Love you. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, gosh. Now um, Bridget's crying. So, anyway... You will love these. If you're wanting a new lipstick, and I'm telling you, a new lipstick is powerful too. I love it. I used to go on Fridays with Brooke shopping, and I would just look forward to buying one nail polish. OPI at Trade Secret. That was my thing. So I hope that I said something today that will motivate you. There's going to be so much more, you guys. I have so much to tell you. Stick with me, because we are going to feel wonderful together. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.